I'm here with Nobu San, the general manager of the Cinema Line from Sony, and we're talking about the Burano and the Cinema Line and an outlook into the future. This is a Cinedy Gear News video, supported by B&H and CVP. Hello everybody here from IBC 2023 from the Sony booth. I'm very honored to be with Nobu-san from Sony. How are you? Good, how are you? Very well indeed. I mean, it's been exactly one year ago we sat exactly here right. uh -huh. and we talked about the cinema line and here we are again, right? Oh, nice to meet you again. That's yes. nice. A lot has happened. Last year you introduced the FR7 and the FX30, I think. Yeah, yeah that's true. And now it's much bigger news this year. The Burano was just introduced. So I, I, I remember we were talking, I was asking you, is there still room for a camera between the FX9 and the Venice 2? And I think here's the answer, right? Nice <laughs> yes, <laughs> nice guess. <laughs> so what was, the, was the, what was the thinking process behind the Burano and why did you feel there is still room in the market here for a camera like this? Yes, uh, this is the new Burano which is the new addition to the Cine Alta camera, which is a very high-end cinema camera. So uh, recently, uh, we're seeing the market is shifting towards more like a, uh, a lot of demand is coming from the uh, short time frame filming, commercials and uh, documentaries type of uh, shooting with the more on the small crews and the, of course the, uh, the small uh, single operator cameras. So we're seeing those demand rising, rising. So uh, we want to create a camera, a very unique camera that fits to those single camera operator or the small crews. That's the thoughts that we came up with. It's of course, I think a very good B camera for the Venice too, because of the XOCN. Um, or are you more looking for people who maybe are upgrading for F from FX9? Actually, uh, kind of both, because this camera, Brano has a sensor that matches Venice 2. So it is very good for the, even for the top end DPs to make the, together with the Venice 2 camera. So it's kind of B camera for the Venice 2. So it's very good uh, option for those top end DPs. But at the same time, as you mentioned, a lot of small crews and uh, single camera operators uh, would love to have the very high end cinematic uh, look plus the mobility, mobility. So uh, I think it will fit to those both customers. So, but let's see uh, what those customers, users will tell us. One thing that we're all quite impressed about is the combination of having finally an IBIS with a built-in ND. For many years we were told it's not possible because of uh, you can't combine the two. So somehow Sony's engineers managed to do that. I mean, maybe you can give us a little insight how difficult it was. Yeah, it was uh, a kind of engineer's dream to have the variable ND plus the in-body stabilization. So it was very challenging, but uh, we do have a lots of very uh, no, no, top-end engineers within us. So they kind of managed to create and produce the world first. Uh, technology and the structure within this very small camera. So that was very tough, but it was very, they enjoyed uh, the challenging for the technology development. I mean, one can only wonder what the future will bring also for new camera models with this, because of course it would be great to have finally built in ND also with smaller cameras. So uh, here's hoping that we will see this in the near future. <laughs> yeah. Change always starts from the start. So uh, we do love challenging and engineers love to challenge. So that's kind of our energy for, the, for polishing the tools, developing the, uh, uh, developing the engineering uh, technologies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's very welcome is of course the usage of CF Express Type B because it's a very established card format by now. Was that something you wanted to do from the start? Was you like uh, to make the camera more feasible? Because of course, investing in the, into the X, uh, AXS workflow is also quite expensive. So uh, well, quite expensive, but uh, for the Venice, we do need uh, AXS memory card for the high speed transfer ratio. So, but in Brano, uh, as I mentioned, it's very unique uh, camera to offer the new addition to the cinema camera. So we want to make it smaller. So that's, as you touch and feel, it's very quite smaller and lightweight than the Venice. So in order to uh, realize, we have to think about all the uh, devices 
to how we can make it smaller, the camera. So the CF type, uh, CF Express Type B is one of the solution that we make the camera smaller, lighter. Mm -hmm. If we take a step back and look at the whole cinema line, uh, it feels more complete now, right? I mean, if you count both the Cine Alta but also the FX cameras. Um, but you know, I'm not, my intention is not to complete. Yeah. Kind of adding the app option to the filmmakers. Yeah. So it has to be unique. So it's not just a price range. Yeah. So that's why we uh, embodied the, a lot of technologies. Yeah. The PL mount, for world first embodied stabilization is the world first. And then, as I mentioned, uh, variable MD, IBIS. So there's lots of like a combination and uh, lots of challenging part of the technology. So I'm not completing yeah. the line, but yeah. adding the very unique uniqueness of the camera. Talking about uniqueness, I mean, you, it's been now a week since the camera was introduced, roughly. So maybe you already got some feedback from the market and maybe some surprises, I don't know, about who are the people who are interested in what fields do they, like, where do they work? You know, did you, maybe you have some insight in this? Yeah, it's just weak, so uh, we're getting a lot of good feedback, but uh, I think they have to try it. Yeah. Try it, and uh, I'm very glad that we have the, those filmmakers very close, so that we would like to listen to those customers and users, and we'd like to polish, even from now, I would like to polish the tools for the filmmakers. So, uh, so far so good, but uh, I think there will be a lot of requests from the users, not just the top end, but at the, uh, the creators and filmmakers. So we would like to hear the advice from them because we are the Sony who has a cre uh, technology, but we don't have like a sense of art. Yeah. So sense of art uh, is in the creator, filmmaker, cinematographers. So we would like to get closer to the filmmakers. Well, I have to say you have been doing a great job at picking uh, three very amazing filmmakers for the launch films. And I have to point this out because sometimes launch films are, you know, like, they're nice, but they're sometimes not exceptional. I think this time it's really exceptional. I mean, this this film by Thierry, uh, what is the, like the, the skydiving film is amazing. Like the footage he was able to get and also the wildlife films. Um, so I think you're on the right path there, definitely. If I talk, uh, stay a little. Yeah, that was very uh, exceptional uh, f feature film, uh, demo reel, right? Yes. So uh, I want to uh, expand, uh, push the boundary of the cinematic uh, filmmaking, so that uh, not only the top end uh, feature filmmaking, but also the commercials, documentary, and the wildlife, maybe maybe sports. So I think this camera will expand and push the boundaries of the filmmaking. So that's what I want to make uh, in the contribution to the industries. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. I think for wildlife, this is very well fitted. I heard from a lot of people. One f piece of feedback I also got from people who film a lot of li wildlife, they are looking for animal autofocus also in this camera because of course, that's the most obvious, you know, like uh, if you could add this maybe in the future, that would be very good. Advice, yeah, uh, yeah. So if there's one thing about, or maybe two things in the cinema line, I mean, you're responsible for the entire cinema line for Sony, so you will have this overview. Um, but is there something that you really want to solve that's a passion of yours where you say, well, I want to get this done, you know, that's like technologically, which hasn't been done before. Is there one thing you can think of or two things that you can think of that you that are really your dream to realize in cameras? Actually, there's a lot. <laughs> well, you can also say a lot of things. Yeah, not just myself, but uh, a lot of engineers, uh, they have a dream. So, uh, but uh, it's not easy. Yep. We have to have like uh, several years to develop. Yep. So uh, I don't say that, mention like one or two, but they do have, this one was one of the dream that we have been dreaming for more than five years. The, in body image stabilization and uh, variable ND. So I think uh, work for device has to be developed on our side, I would say. So not just like uh, ergonomics, but at the same time, for device development is very, very important. Like variable ND, in body stabilization, those like, uh, I would say, uh, optical 
uh, core devices has is kind of one direction that we are going to focus on optical core device. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you you know you've been in this industry for a while too, and if you look ahead ten years, you know where do you see where do you see cameras going? Uh, what, what, what is what is what are some of the fields where you see most of the development, both in you know software but also hardware? Mm -hmm. So uh, within like five to ten years, I think uh, the creators and filmmakers, cinematographers, want something different, right? Something unique. Mm -hmm. They have to be unique. So uh, their demand will change, and then the camera has to uh, help to make that happen. So. We would like to continue uh, listen to the users, and then we match with our dream of the technology development with the cinematic uh, cinematographer's dream, and combining with those two, and then we will have new core devices. So uh, I can't say this is it, but uh, it always we are always trying to understand what the needs of the creator to have an open ear, open ear, and then at the same time. Uh, we're kind of we have a dream on the engineering side. Yeah. So their dream, our dream combines, and then our future of the filmmaking will develop. So that's kind of my uh, philosophy uh, over the development. Very nice. And where do you see the interconnectedness of devices going? Uh, yeah, as we launching the Creators Cloud, and then uh, there's lots of uh, improvement in the wireless connection. So. We would like to camera to have more like ability to share and uh, wirelessly communicate with a lots of devices and people and not just the devices but at the same time the people people who is involved in the production. We would like to connect those and then more creativity will come in. So uh, that's another dream that I have. That's a good point. I think a lot of times. Um, if it's a bigger set or even a medium-sized set, you have more people on set, but I think a lot of people don't even know what's going on before and in the camera because they can't get close. So giving them the ability to watch from being further away what's actually being shot is actually major. And uh, we talked about the camera control app. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, and that's... I'm glad that you like it. That's brilliant because I think it's just so important to have the ability to control your cameras remotely. But the way, until now, it's always been a little bit of a compromise, and now it feels like you can control practically everything about a camera, and I think that's that's very important. Yeah. yeah. Uh, since last year, we had uh, this one year was very very fruitful uh, year. Uh, we launched the new model F R seven and uh, Realito, uh the camera extension F X thirty, and at the same time we hold uh, future Sony Future Filmmaker Awards. Yes. I think we met before, right? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we are getting uh, closer to the uh, to create a community, and then we will get those requests, uh, even for the young filmmakers. Yeah. And uh, we also have a good relationship with the USC, University of South California. We go there and we get feedback. And then the monitor control was big hit to them, even for the younger filmmakers. So. Well, I also don't know what happened behind the scenes, but I feel the software from Sony is is making big steps. It's I, I'm sure you have a lot m more developers now. I don't know, but you, you feel that you realize the importance of software, which is I think so crucial these days. So that's very nice to see. Yeah, young people, future filmmakers, guys, uh, not hesitating to use the smartphone. They have a smartphone yeah. from the beginning, right? So that's why kind of we came to idea that they can use their iPhone to monitor and control. So I think that will fit to the, even for the young filmmakers. Absolutely. Well, Nobu-san, thank you so much for your time. And um, I guess maybe we see, see each other again in one year here yeah. and do another update and see what happens. Of course, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned to Synity for a lot more from IBC 2023 and also check out our videos about the Burano and also the monitor control app. And stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.